All right, so next up is going to be moving the capacitors off of the circuit board in order to make it as small as possible. So the way we're going to do this is I've already put a little bit of solder on the two joints of one of the capacitors on the front of the board. And you can see with my left hand, I'm actually holding the capacitor and giving it slight pressure and rocking it back and forth while heating the two joints on the back of the capacitor. So normally I'll heat the left joint and push it away from that joint and then wait for it to move a little bit, heat the right joint, push it away from the right joint, back and forth until it just pops off in your hand. So capacitors need to go a specific way. They're a positive and minus just like a battery. So what you can see now is that one side of the capacitor in my hand has a gray stripe down it with minus signs. On a board, the where in the spot where the capacitor came from, there's also a white stripe on the side that needs to correspond with the negative side of the capacitor. So it's important to only take the capacitors off one at a time so that you can remember exactly where they came from. Also notice that on the front of the board, there's a bunch of places where there are places for capacitors, but there aren't any on this model of monitor. So be sure you're putting them back in the right spot. So what I'm doing now is just adding a little bit of solder to the front of the board, the two holes where the, where the capacitor came out of. And the whole idea of this is to move the capacitors actually off the board and lay them sideways so that they are no longer taking up vertical space in our lid. So the next part of this is figuring out exactly how much wire I need. And the length of wire you're going to need is pretty much just the distance from the position where the capacitor was to the nearest side of the board because that's where you're going to want to just get it out of the way. So I've cut some fairly short length of wire. They don't need to be very long at all. And now I'm going to go ahead and strip the ends and we're going to skip forward a little bit. Once I've got the wire cut and stripped, all you do is add a little bit of solder to each end of the wire. Uh, the wire and solder joints will be much stronger if you introduce the solder ahead of time. And so now what I'm doing is just joining one end of the, end of the capacitor to one of the wires I have cut. And then after that's done, and I'm sure that the connection is nice and strong, I'm going to go ahead and grab the other wire and solder it to the other lead of the capacitor. You're going to want to go ahead and make sure that both your solder joints are nice and sturdy because if your one of your capacitors ever comes off, that's pretty much the end of your screen. So these are pretty crucial to everything you're going to want to be doing with this X-Top. So in the end here, if the camera will ever focus, it's going to go ahead and look something like that. So we're going to make sure we've got the wire that's going from the negative side of the capacitor, and we're going to gently solder that to the white half of the circle where the capacitor sits. And then we're going to adjust the other wire so we can uh, make sure we can fit it in there. And then we're going to solder that one to the other half of the circle. Again, be really careful. Make sure you don't mess up any of the stuff around it. Make sure once you uh, do finish the solder that both joints are strong enough to not pop off. Because like I said, if any of these capacitors go down, your whole screen's going to go dark and you're going to be probably not very happy. So at this point, you're pretty much done. Uh, I tend to wrap the uh, entire thing in electrical tape, uh, at the very least the exposed, exposed leads at the bottom of the capacitor so that they don't come into contact with anything or each other. And then you can just bend it right on over so it lays flat out off the side of the circuit board. And once you go ahead and do that with every capacitor on the board, I'm not going to show video of that because now you get the idea. But I'm going to go ahead and do that to every capacitor on the board, stick it right off to the side, and that'll really flatten things out for us.
So as you can see, I've covered the ends of the capacitor in electrical tape and made sure it was nice and tight so that none of the connections are ever going to run into each other. And this is pretty much what your board should look like when you're done. Uh, the capacitors don't have to be coming off in the exact same directions. They can be coming off, you know, wherever you want to put them, as long as they're coming off the board. Also, you'll notice that I removed the 8-pin connector from the top of the board, the black connector. Uh, just do it the same style as the VGA or DVI. Uh, it's not hard. You'll figure it out. I'm confident. That's why I didn't take a video of it. And what I'm doing here is just test fitting it, putting it in my lid, making sure it's uh, going to fit, making sure that there isn't anything else on the board that needs removing, and that all the capacitors are sufficiently out of the way to allow everything to close. And it looks like we're good, so it's time to move on to the power inverter board. So if you'll go ahead and grab your power inverter board, uh, flip it over and you should see something very similar to this picture here. Now what we're going to do is take a Dremel tool with the cutoff wheel and you're going to need to slice this board along the red lines that I've outlined here. And you're going to want to be really slow, really careful about this because you do not want to slice any traces or anything. Because if you do, you're going to have to find another inverter board somewhere else, probably end up buying a new screen, it'll be terrible. Uh, what this is essentially doing is we're cutting off the right half, the larger part of the board in this picture. And what that side of the board does is it uh, it's the inverter part of the inverter board. And so it takes the AC current from the wall and converts it back into DC current for the backlights. And we don't need that because we're going to go ahead and let the 360 power supply uh, do that inverting for us. And we're just going to leech off of all of its power. So you can go ahead and make that line. And now let's take a look at how not to cut it. So you can see that this cut was mostly correct. Uh, it went along the right lines. Uh, unfortunately, I was going too fast, uh, wasn't paying enough attention, you know, whatever. And those areas circled in red are going to be a big problem because this uh, power board is now completely useless because I sliced up some of the traces. Uh, technically, it's repairable, but not something I want to deal with in this video series and not something you want to deal with while you're working on this either. So trust me, just take your time. Don't cut into these traces. And uh, we're going to go ahead and look at a zoomed up picture here so you can see even closer uh, just how bad the damage was. Yeah, so here we can see that it completely destroyed, in the upper red circle, it completely destroyed uh, two or three traces there with some uh, random cutting through that corner. And then the blade bounced down in the bottom circle, allowing it to slice through another, what, two or three traces? I can't really tell. So, like I said, be careful, take your time, and make sure that it ends up looking like the one in the rest of the video. Because you need nice clean lines and you need all those paths to make this thing work. So as you can see, I've got my power board all sliced up. And I've already gone ahead and moved the capacitors from the top of the board to the bottom of the board. And just done the exact same thing that we did on the circuit board by moving them off of the board to slim everything down a little bit. Also, I've removed the big yellow kind of brick looking thing on the top of the board. I went ahead and desoldered that, pulled that off, and then flattened all the components on the top of the board. So that's all stuff you should know how to do, and you shouldn't have a problem figuring that out on your own. So moving forward, what I'm doing in the video now is attaching a yellow wire to the spot you see on the sliced inverter board. So that's going to be our 12 volt line supply, excuse me, 12 volt line supplying power to the backlights. And then the wire I just attached at the top to those three connected lines at the right of the screen is going to be a ground. And then this next red wire and the other red wire, which is going to accompany it right next to it, are essentially going to be uh, five volt lines that tell the backlights when to turn on and off. Basically, when you hit the power button, it tells it to start turning the backlights on so that you can see what's going on. And because you can never have a, too much ground, I'm going ahead and attaching an extra ground wire at the bottom that's, I believe, not technically necessary, but we like to be safe around here. So by the end of the day, your board should look something like this. And you notice I've got the wires. It may be eight, nine, ten inches long. They're just going to go over to the circuit board 
and be the interconnect between the two. So however far away you want your circuit board, that's going to be how far away you're going to want to cut these wires. In our next video, we're going to cover connecting these two boards up together. But for now, congratulations on finishing step three.